A chilled wind whipped through the grassland, which was even now still tinted with a mild frost. Kunta was protected from the cold bite thanks to his fur, pulled from an obsidian panther he had killed a couple of years before. It was his most prized possession, a sign of his capability as a strong, young hunter, and like every member of his tribe who bore the pelt of a beast, he protected it as he would protect his child. Without it, his status in the tribe would be scarce higher than the suckling babes who were carried in the folds of their parents' pelts. Without it, he could not be trusted by the others to be taken on hunting raids for the more dangerous but rewarding creatures that would come in the following months. Many hours of travel passed before Merg held up his hand and stabbed his walking stick into the ground. The tribe had reached a place he deemed suitable to set up camp, a small grove that had enough foliage to conceal them at a distance, but not so much as to hide any potential predators. Night had already begun to push away what warmth was granted by day's influence, but the party did not waste time fearing the encroaching cold as they hastily unfolded their tents from the backs of the young men who had yet to prove their worth in a hunt. The sturdy poles forged from everlasting redwood drove into the ground in a single thrust, their lightweight but nearly impervious strength creating a strong foundation for the covers that would ward away the chill tonight. The covers, made of the massive leaves of the weeping willow and caulked with the waterproof sap of the same tree, would hold tight against anything less than thunderstorms and squalls. As the men hurried to erect the teepees, the women were busy preparing the camp with the variety of necessary amenities. They still had some musk from the desert squonk they had killed the previous year. When deployed lightly in a wide circle around the camp, the overwhelming odor created a sort of invisible barrier that was all but impassable by any dangerous creature with a strong sense of smell. While one group hurried to form a perimeter, another was setting up the communal fire pit, which would be used to keep the entire tribe warm during the long, cold night in addition to helping cook all their food. One woman had already cut a square of turf away for the fire pit and set it aside. This would be replaced when the tribe moved on, to hide evidence that they had been there. A couple of other tribe members had procured some jagged stones to dig the actual pit out, and made haste to finish the pit as the light of day quickly faded. Several more still were sticking more everlasting redwood poles into the ground around the pit, upon which they would hang a tarp made from the skin of the sponge whale, a creature with skin that could absorb almost any non-solid material and detoxify it which made it perfect for preventing smoke from escaping the campfire area and alerting predators. Normally during this process of setting up camp, which Kunta knew as the settling, the hunters of the tribe would be busy trying to track prey for tonight's meal. However, the approach of spring brought with it a different situation. There was no safer time of year than right now, in the first couple of days of spring. Because of this, the tribe used this brief respite between seasons to throw a festival of sorts in honor of the new year, and to strengthen their bonds against the coming hardships. It was the one time of year where Kunta's tribe could laugh and smile and forget, for however precious little time, their daily struggle for survival.